Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Happy New Month, family of God. I rejoice to be with you today. I'm glad that we have entered a new month, the month of September. I pray that good things will happen in your life. You remember this month for good in the name of Jesus. Something great, something precious will happen in your life. I pray that grace will speak for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So today I will be taking us on the subject, Salvation by Grace. And I pray that the Lord will elevate you and bless you as we study together in these few minutes. So today we are taking our test from Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, that's where we're doing our Bible lesson from. Ephesians chapter 1, reading verse 19. I hope you have your Bible with you as we study in this lesson. Ephesians 1, from verse 19 to 23. That's where we're reading. And you can as well watch and read with me. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards world? We believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And I put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So in our lesson today, our key verse is that Jesus Christ provides salvation for us, and salvation is a work of grace. It's not something we work for. It's not something we do particularly that brings us salvation. Salvation is a gift of God for us and is the gift of, sal uh, of saving from judgment to come. Salvation is a gift of faith. And our key verse again in Ephesians 2 it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Man lost it when Adam, our great father, sinned in the Garden of Eden. The sin of Adam and Eve brought all human race under the judgment of God. And that's why Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God in his infinite mercy, through his Son, Jesus Christ, provided salvation for us as Jesus died on the cross for us. Jesus died to save us from our sin. Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sin. Jesus paid the price of our soul redemption. So today, salvation is made free, not for what we are going to do or a price we are going to pay. Nobody can pay for the sin he has done. Now remember that a, a, a person that is sentenced to jail cannot pay for his own judgment. It is somebody else or people around him that we have to pay. And all of us are saying nobody can pay for man. It's all of us are guilty in the sight of God. So salvation is made available for us through Jesus Christ our Lord at the cross of Calvary. We are saved not on the merit of what we have done, but because of what Jesus did for us. Grace is unmerited favor bestowed upon us because of Jesus. And salvation is brought down for every man on the face of the earth. Everyone that is curated by God have the opportunity to receive God's salvation. So our next Bible reading is in Ephesians chapter 2, looking at the riches of His grace. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, then verse uh, 7. Ephesians 2, 7. Okay, it says, Ephesians 2, 7, that at the ages to come, he must show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. The exceeding 
in ages to come, we must show the exceeding riches of His grace. That is what we are enjoying, the riches of the grace of God towards us that Jesus provided for us on the cross of Calvary. So the Lord Jesus had given us salvation, so by Him we receive grace to be saved. And that's why the next verse says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. So Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2 also goes on to give us the test of truth, of salvation, is of grace, is of the riches of God. Romans chapter 2, reading verse 4, Romans 2 verse 4, Romans 2 4, it says, Of the depthness, who despises thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Now we don't look at sinners and look at them as somebody that is standing condemned before God. We are saved by the goodness and the mercy of God. We are saved by the mercy of God, not because of what we have done or we are doing, not because we go to church. It is the mercy of God that saves us. It is the mercy, the goodness of God that led us to salvation, that led us to repentance. And we must be grateful to God for that. Also, let's go to the book of 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy 1 verse 14. 1 Timothy 1 verse 14. 1 Timothy 1 verse 14. Another passage of scripture, we're reading 1 Timothy 1 verse 4. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundance with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Grace and love which is in Christ Jesus. So the grace of God brought salvation. And it is the love of God that gave us salvation. God gave us salvation and it is of God's goodness that we are saved. Salvation is free. Not we, nothing that we can do can pay for our salvation. We cannot earn it. It is God's gift for us. God's gift for the whole of human race. You cannot work for it. It is provided for all men, all men, every man with inside the church and outside the church. Salvation has been made available for all men. If you can just believe God, is willing to save those who are willing to call upon him for salvation. It is of grace so that we cannot boast of what he did to save us. It is not because of what we have done, it is because of what he did for us. And next in our lesson says, saving us by grace. Saved by grace. I am saved by the grace of God. Salvation is a work of grace. Ephesians chapter 2 again. Ephesians chapter 2, reading verse 8. Ephesians 2, 8. Please do not mind the noise because we're having a workman walking in the premises of the church. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. I congratulate you, my brother, my sister, that you have received the gift of God that brought salvation. In verse 9 it says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. So salvation is something we cannot boast about. We receive it as a gift from God. And also Romans chapter 3, Romans 3 verse 24. Salvation is a gift of God that we receive through the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 3 verse 24 is a gift that we receive from Christ and being justified freely by his grace we are justified that's a legal term we have been sent we are supposed to receive judgment because we are guilty but we receive justification by freely by the grace of God through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus always hold on to that that it is not what you have done it is what he did for you. It is what he did for the whole of human race so that we all can rejoice in his salvation. Going also to the, to the Bible in Titus, Titus chapter 2, 
Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Verse 11, it tells us, Titus 2, 11, it says to us again, For the grace of God brought salvation and appeared to all men. The grace of God that brought salvation and appeared to all men, to every man on the face of the earth. The grace of God that brought salvation and appeared to all men. So God's grace brought us salvation. God's grace gave us eternal life. Titus 3 verse 7 again. Titus 3 7. God's grace brought salvation. That being justified by His grace, we are justified by a grace. Remember, grace is unmerited favor. We should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. God's grace is salvation. And that's why we interpret or, or use the grace and translate the great as follow. It says God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace is rich to meet every needs of our life. We need the grace of God to succeed in life and that we can receive to run the Christian race. Grace is not limited to salvation. Grace is divine favor. Grace is, is what every person needs to run the Christian race. Grace is like a lubricating oil in the engine. You cannot do without God's grace in your life, in the journey of life, in every day, in, in ministry, in, in works of life. We need the grace of God. The grace is not for the strong or the mighty, but it is of God that giveth grace. I pray that the grace of God will continue to uphold you and strengthen you and keep you. Next in our lesson, we look at the mercy of God. It is of God's mercy that we are saved. God do not look at us because of what we have done. He decided to show us His mercy. He decided to bestow His mercy upon us. And we are product of the mercy of God. We rejoice in the mercy of God. Ephesians 2 verse 4. Among, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. God, who is rich in mercy, in his great love wherewith he loved us. God loved us, not because of who we are, of what we have done, but because of his kindness, his, his loving kindness. He had mercy upon us. He provided salvation for us through Jesus Christ so that we today can have salvation and have eternal life from redemption, from judgment to come. Look at the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm. We're looking at Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And then we're looking at verse 17. Psalm 103, verse 17. It is the mercy of God. I pray that the mercy of God will not depart from your life. The mercy of God will not depart from our lives in the name of Jesus. And I pray that this month you will receive the mercy of God. Psalm 103, verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, from them that fear him, and his righteousness unto their children's children. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. I pray you will rejoice in his mercy. You will be glad in his mercy. Take the light in the mercy of God. Acknowledge what God has done in your life. Appreciate him for showing mercy on you, for counting you worthy to obtain mercy. You know, there is the provision of mercy. Sometimes when people do something wrong and they are in judgment or they are in prison, the government will set apart a day to show mercy to some people among the prisoners, the common prisoners that are under judgment. Some of them stand in trial. Some of them are condemned already. But the judge will go around. They will look at them and decide to show mercy on some number of them. Uh, look at Luke chapter 3, verse 20, um, Lamentation now, Lamentation 3, verse 22 to 23. He said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. It's of the Lord's mercy that we have been kept. And I pray that the mercy of God 
will not depart from you as we enter this new month as we are going to the end of the year the mercy of god will continue to sustain and support you and strengthen you and you will rejoice in his salvation and lastly we look at titus titus chapter 3 the mercy of god that brought salvation titus 3 verse 5 titus 3 5 3 5 yes not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercies he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost so we are saved we are products of the mercy of god we are saved by grace mercy located us salvation comes as a result of god's mercy upon the penitent sinner when we repented of our sin god's mercy found us and jesus christ paid on the cross of calvary provided salvation for us jesus died to provide salvation for the whole of humanity we all need the mercy of god in our life god's mercy is available to all men because god's grace is available to all who will call upon the lord for salvation the lord bless you as we have started this study the grace of god will be mighty upon your life i pray that mercy will not depart from your life and i pray that the grace of god will continue to keep you in every areas of your life and support you and sustain you shall be well with you in jesus name